The book Silent Spring by Rachel Carson uh, was published in uh, fall of 1962. I read that book and it made a, a profound impact on me. It really made me to start to think about the impacts that humans were having on, particularly on uh, aquatic environments, but uh, on the environment in general. The book was, of course, about the effects of persistent pesticides on, uh, on ecosystems. And that book got me thinking about trying to do something in my career that involved using my science background, my chemistry background, but uh, rather than going off and learning how to do uh, chemistry to make a new perfume or new detergent or something like that, use chemistry to understand environmental effects. I did my undergraduate uh, work in uh, chemistry, and I was always interested in, in the physical sciences in particular. Uh, I was also interested in, in engineering, uh, but the university I went to didn't have a chemical engineering program. I had some good friends in civil engineering and was always thinking about going into that, but to be honest, I was turned off by the mechanics and structures parts of uh, civil engineering, really wasn't interested in that. Um, when I was a senior, my uh, two good friends in civil engineering told me about a course that they needed to take uh, to complete their civil engineering degrees and said, why don't you take this course? It was called environmental sanitation. Why don't you take this course? You don't need to have any mechanics background or structures and so on. So I took the course uh, with uh, them and it exposed me to the field that then was called sanitary engineering but has since become known as environmental engineering. Um, that happened at a time uh, shortly after the book Silent Spring by Rachel Carson uh, was published. Well, the environmental sanitation course I took was taught by an instructor who had just come from the University of Wisconsin. And he asked me uh, after class one day what uh, I was uh, planning to do when I graduated. He knew I was uh, a senior in my last semester. And I, I told him I wasn't sure, but I wanted to go to graduate school. And he told me about the, a new graduate pro program at the University of Wisconsin called Water Chemistry. Took me to his office, called the professor who ran that program, his name is G. Fred Lee, and set up an appointment for me to go up and uh, meet with uh, Dr. Lee the uh, next Saturday. I, I went up, I was impressed with the program, got an offer of an assistantship from him and uh, started in the program as soon as I graduated that uh, that June, and sort of the rest is history. I never looked back and regretted my decision to go into uh, the, the field of water chemistry. Certainly, uh, Rachel Carson, I think, was a, uh, a role model, a mentor in a sense, and even though I never knew her personally, but uh, one who led me into the field. The instructor at the uh, Marquette University, uh, Jim Kerrigan, was obviously very instrumental. Uh, to me in, in, in getting into the field of water chemistry. My major professor, G. Fred Lee, uh, I think uh, imprinted on me some very important uh, skills in terms of research and being skeptical about uh, science being done and always asking questions. And then finally, the probably the most important uh, uh, mentor during my early career was uh, Werner Stumm, who is generally regarded as the, the father of, of uh, water chemistry, a very famous uh, individual. Everybody in the field of environmental engineering knows who Werner uh, Sturm was. And I had the good fortune of spending a, a, uh, a year in Switzerland uh, early in uh, my career in 1971-72, uh, working uh, with uh, Sturm. I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Minnesota in uh, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, I taught there for 29 years. I retired officially last uh, May. Uh, before that, I was a faculty member for 15 years at the University of, Min of Florida uh, in Gainesville. I received my degrees 
from Marquette University in chemistry and mathematics in 1963 and then started graduate school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison in a water chemistry program. I got a master's and a PhD from there uh, and then I started my career teaching at the University of Florida in 1963, 1966, excuse me. I think the biggest challenge in my career uh, was uh, the teaching in the sense that uh, when you go to graduate school, you, you learn how to do research and you, and you learn a lot of academic disciplines, uh, uh, get a lot of knowledge, but you don't really get training in being a faculty member and in, uh, in teaching. So you start your career uh, and you are told you're going to teach this course, that course, you develop the course, but you don't really have any any experience in doing it. So you, it's a matter of learning while doing, and that's not really the best best way <laughs> of of approaching a, a, a complicated uh, subject like like uh, teaching uh, in uh, university and graduate school level. Uh, today, actually, I think things are a little better for our new faculty in that. Uh, in their graduate programs, many of them at least do have opportunities to uh, uh, take coursework uh, in be becoming a, uh, a faculty member. Future faculty programs are fairly common in graduate uh, schools uh, these days. And I think there's also more help, uh, more mentoring uh, that is done by senior faculty today, today for uh, junior faculty. So I think my biggest challenge was uh, sort of the need to do it on my own in terms of learning how to teach and developing uh, courses and, and things like that. Well, I think my most important accomplishments are the students that uh, I mentored, uh, graduate students, uh, over my 40-year career. I uh, advised or co-advised, uh, I think it was 26 or 27 PhD students, uh, almost all of them. Uh, continue to work in the field of environmental chemistry or environmental engineering. Most of them are environmental engineers. Uh, I mentored and advised uh, approximately 65 master's students and uh, most of those individuals uh, went on to careers working largely in consulting firms, uh, some working for uh, agencies, government agencies and environmental protection. So I think my legacy my most important legacy is, is the students that uh, I advised. But uh, two other things that stand out uh, in my mind as, as major accomplishments, aside from the over 100 research papers that I wrote and, and uh, published mostly with uh, graduate students over the years. So these two other accomplishments were, first of all, I established an interdisciplinary program called Water Resources Science at the University of Minnesota in 1995. Uh, it uh, grew to involve approximately 100 faculty from maybe a dozen or 15 departments scattered around the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campuses and also the University of Minnesota uh, Duluth. Uh, it uh, consistently has uh, on the order of 80 to 100 graduate students uh, who are active in the program and, and get degrees in uh, interdisciplinary degrees in water resources science. It became one of the largest interdisciplinary graduate programs at the University of uh, Minnesota and, and uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, uh, I started that program and that it uh, continues to uh, prosper uh, since I have uh, uh, left the university and, and, and left that program. The one other major accomplishment uh, is in terms of writing books. I've written two major textbooks in my life. One of them is a uh, book on kinetics, uh, uh, aquatic chemical kinetics, uh, which has been uh, uh, used widely as a reference uh, book by uh, environmental engineers and environmental uh, chemists. It's been used to some extent uh, for uh, teaching purposes, but it's primarily a reference book and uh, uh, has been widely used for that uh, purpose. 
More recently, uh, with a, a younger colleague, uh, Bill Arnold from the University of Minnesota, uh, uh, we wrote a, a new textbook on water chemistry, which just was published uh, uh, this spring and I know is starting to be adapted uh, this fall by environmental engineering programs for their water chemistry uh, courses uh, at various uh, universities around the country. Uh, particularly pleased with the way the book uh, turned out. I, I believe it does represent a, a new approach to uh, teaching water chemistry. It's a broader textbook than, than the textbooks are, that are, are currently available. Uh, and I think it represents sort of a, a 21st century approach to teaching water chemistry. <laughs>